Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. The DJI Neo 2 is an amazingly capable and versatile drone. If you're in Canada and have a Neo 2, please watch this video to understand what Transport Canada regulations do and do not apply. Whether you're flying in hand launch mode, phone control mode, regular controller mode, or even using FPV goggles. I'll cover these cases, answer some common questions, and provide you with practical guidelines for safe and happy droning. Let's get into it. Drone regulations in Canada cover drones in four weight classes. Those below 250 grams, those between 250 grams and 25 kilograms, larger drones up to 150 kilograms, and huge drones over 150 kilograms. The weight classification is based upon the takeoff weight of your drone, including the battery and any accessories. The Neo 2 weighs just 160 grams, even with the optional transceiver module, so it's definitely a sub 250 gram drone. By the way, the Canadian rules treat drones and RC aircraft equally and call them RPAs or remotely piloted aircraft. Often you'll hear the term RPAS referring to the whole system, including aircraft and controller. For drones weighing less than 250 grams, like the Neo 2, only a few of the Canadian drone regulations apply. The most important being 900.06. 900.06 applies to all drones, and I call it the don't do anything stupid rule. No person shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person. In other words, stay well away from anywhere manned aircraft are flying or might be flying and don't fly recklessly around people. In short, don't do anything stupid. There are other restrictions you should be aware of as well. First of all, there are over 100 places designated as Class F restricted zones across Canada, including places like Parliament Hill and Niagara Falls. There are also a few dozen RPAS restricted airspace zones across Canada, defining keepout zones around critical sites such as nuclear power plants. So unless you have permission, you cannot fly any drone in these areas even in your own backyard, including the tiny Neo 2. These no-fly zones are shown in red in the Drone Pilot Canada app, the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool, and the Nav Drone app. But you cannot rely upon the DJI Fly app to stop you from flying in these areas. Typically, the Fly app will give you a warning, but then allow you to just click OK and continue. If you do so and you're in one of these no-fly zones, you may be breaking the law and can be fined thousands of dollars. Always check the Drone Pilot Canada app, the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool website, or NavDrone to be sure. Also, there can be temporary no-fly zones that pop up, often related to law enforcement activities or special events like the Grey Cup. They're raised by notices called NOTAMs and are shown in the Drone Pilot Canada app and NavDrone app. The NRC Drone Site Selection Tool and the DJI Fly app will not show these temporary no-fly zones. Do not fly in these areas without permission. And even if there isn't a NOTAM in effect, do not fly your DJI Neo 2 anywhere near wildfires or any other type of emergency operation. There's a good chance that water bombers or medevac helicopters, for example, could be flying in these areas and you do not want to interfere with their crucial operations. Flying a drone within 10 kilometers of a wildfire can result in a huge fine. You also can't take off from or land in national parks, most provincial parks, and migratory bird sanctuaries, again without special permission. The reason is that studies have shown that wild animals and birds can be massively stressed by the high-pitched whining of a drone, even at long distances. So be kind and stay away from these areas. And on top of all these restrictions, you'll need permission to take off or land from private property and surprisingly, many municipal parks. Check your local bylaws to be sure. 
Drone Pilot Canada offers handy links and bylaw summaries for the largest communities in Canada. From an aviation regulations perspective, it is permitted to fly over private property and municipal parks, but remember you're still subject to other rules. You cannot violate people's privacy by taking pictures of their backyards, for example. And just like any other activity, you can't be a nuisance by interfering with someone else's enjoyment of a public or private place. Nor can you harass wildlife like ducks on a pond. Be respectful of others. And by the way, it should probably go without saying, but here we go. It is in fact illegal to use a drone to carry contraband into prisons. Here are six fundamental guidelines you should keep in mind. These are just my guidelines, but failure to follow safe guidelines like these may be considered reckless or negligent, and as such could be a violation of that 900.06 regulation. Number one, try to keep your drone within visual line of sight, or not more than 500 meters away. And of course, here's the catch. The Neo2 is so small, if you take your eyes off it for a second, you may not be able to spot it again. So, at the very least, know where your drone is in the airspace and keep that patch of sky in sight so you'll be better prepared to take appropriate action if something goes wrong. Second, don't fly if you've been drinking or are under the influence of drugs. Flying a drone is tricky and can require quick reflexes and good judgment, neither of which is likely if you're drunk or stoned. Even though there are no specific altitude limits for a sub-250 gram drone, stay under 120 meters and really low, like 30 meters, if you're anywhere near an airport, in controlled airspace, or anywhere else aircraft or helicopters are landing, taking off, or operating at low altitudes, such as around emergency areas. Don't fly if the temperature is below minus 10 or if the wind is gusting over 38 kilometers per hour. These are the limits stated in the NEO2 specs. You run the risk of losing your drone, and warranties don't usually apply if you're outside the drone's operating limits. Don't fly near or over people who aren't involved with your flight, especially crowds of people. If you're zooming right over people's heads, somebody might get hurt. And while it may not seriously hurt if you hit somebody, Prop guards do not prevent hair from getting caught in the props. Don't ask me how I know. And please be aware that flying a sub-250 gram dro drone at an advertised event, such as a sporting event or a parade, now requires a special permit called an SFOC. With those guidelines in mind, let's get into some specific questions. Do I need to register my NEO2? No you don't need to register a drone under 250 grams. In fact, you cannot register a NEO2 even if you wanted to. But do I need to get a drone pilot certificate? Well, it's exactly the same story. As long as your drone is under 250 grams, you do not need to be certified. You can fly without any drone pilot certification. Now, I should mention at this point that the Drone Pilot Association of Canada has a great drone safety course available. It's really informative whether you're new to drones or experienced. Okay, but I looked on the Transport Canada drone safety page and I see all sorts of rules about basic and advanced operations. If I'm flying a NEO2, which one am I? Answer, neither one. Basic or advanced operations and all their applicable rules are for drones weighing 250 grams or more. And there are even more rules for level one complex operations and for organizations with an RPAS operator certificate. But none of these apply to sub 250 gram drones. I'm using my Neo2 to practice flying drones before I buy a larger one. Can I use my Neo2 to take my flight review for my advanced pilot certification? No, the drone you fly at a flight review must be registered, and you cannot register a drone as small as a DJI NEO2. I know I must stay away from airports and heliports, but how do I know where they are? There are three tools that properly show Canadian airports and heliports. The Drone Pilot Canada app, which I'm the co-developer of, the NavDrone app, and its corresponding website, 
and the NRC Drone Site Selection Tool website. All of these tools have special sub 250 gram views, which show no fly zones in red and caution areas in yellow for drones like the Neo 2. While you can fly in the yellow caution areas shown by these tools, these represent areas where manned aircraft should be expected. So I strongly recommend you stay below 30 meters or 100 feet above ground level. If you stay low, you're not likely going to encounter manned aircraft, unless of course they're landing or taking off. And for that reason, you should never fly at the ends of airport runways. Also stay away from hospitals since most hospitals have heliports and be extremely careful around potential seaplane operations. Please note that the tools I mentioned here show only registered, certified or military aerodromes, but planes can also operate from small private airfields that are not shown on any official tools. And of course, helicopters can land pretty much anywhere. So at all times, keep your eyes and ears open. Moving on. Can I fly my Neo 2 in controlled airspace, like Class C airspace? Again, yes, you can, technically, but controlled airspace is where manned aircraft hang out when landing or taking off from major airports. So air traffic is likely to exist, and so you need to be extra careful. And controlled airspace, like Class C, D, or E, starts right at the ground level. Most major cities are, in fact, largely covered in controlled airspace and that's from the ground up. Now, if you're new to aviation or drones, all this jargon-like controlled airspace can be bewildering and surprising. Make your life simple and always check one of the tools I mentioned to see if you're in controlled airspace. And I recommend you stay below 30 meters above the ground level if you are. Now, if you're doing real estate shots from your Neo 2, 30 meters is perfectly fine to get a great perspective on a property. But hang on, the Neo 2 is a DJI drone. Surely I can rely on the DJI FlySafe map to keep me flying safely and legally. No, absolutely not. The DJI FlySafe map does not reflect Canadian regulations and is missing many no-fly zones. Please, please, please do not rely upon your drone's built-in map to determine if it is legal to fly. You must check the Drone Pilot Canada app, the Drone Site Selection Tool, or yes, the NavDrone app for proper representation of Canadian drone airspace. Here's a simple example. You can fly your DJI drone in a Class F restricted zone with the simple tap of a button on a warning message, but that kind of flight would be absolutely illegal and could bring you a $1,000 fine. So consider any warnings from the DJI Fly app as a strong reminder to check one of the tools I just mentioned before hitting that OK button. I know there are restrictions about how close to people you can fly larger drones, but can I fly my Neo 2 over people? Well, since it's below 250 grams, the proximity to bystander rules don't apply to the Neo 2. So yes, you can fly over people. But if you do so, please be extremely careful and be courteous. If you're taking off or landing near people, give them a friendly heads up. And whatever you do, don't fly recklessly near people. Avoid flying over crowds of people and be aware that starting back in 2025, you will need an SFOC or Special Flight Operations Certificate to fly within 15 meters or 50 feet of what is called an advertised event, anything like a sports event, parade, concert, or, or even a market that has been widely publicized. I have videos explaining how to apply for an SFOC. Can I use my Neo 2 for commercial drone work, like real estate shots? Yes, you can fly your Neo 2, or any drone for that matter, for money in Canada. Unlike in the US, the Canadian drone regulations do not differentiate between commercial or recreational flights. All the same rules apply. The one restriction is that you must be Canadian or a permanent resident to fly drones commercially. I bought FPV goggles for my Neo 2. Do I need a spotter? Well, since the Neo 2 is below 250 grams, you don't need a spotter, also known as a visual observer. 
That said, if you're flying FPV in a busy park or some other risky area, a spotter can help you fly more safely. Hey, when the NEO2 is flying in an autonomous mode, like follow me or doing a droney, nobody's flying it. Who's responsible if something goes wrong? Well, whoever launched it would be considered the pilot in command in these circumstances. So when you initiate one of these flights, consider who or what could get in the way of that drone. And know how to quickly abort the flight if something goes wrong or a hazard suddenly appears. You are responsible. Do privacy laws apply to the NEO2? Yes, they sure do. I suggest you read the privacy guidelines on the Transport Canada drone safety website or watch my video on this subject. There's a link in the description below. The key principle here is not to take images of people or their possessions where they would reasonably expect privacy, like in their backyards, for example. Err on the side of respect as well and stay back sufficiently such that you can't identify people. Ask permission whenever it's possible. And if someone complains about where you're flying, don't start arguing. Respectfully and safely end your flight. Feel free to discuss the situation once your drone is safely on the ground, but don't get into a heated debate. It's really not worth it. So there you have it. Please remember the golden RPAS rule that applies to all drones, the don't do anything stupid rule. But also be aware that there are many no-fly zone cases you need to be aware of as well and plenty of other things to consider when you're flying your DJI NEO2. I hope you've found this video helpful in explaining the regulations and providing some reasonable guidelines. Lastly, please consider joining the Drone Pilot Association of Canada, representing recreational and small commercial drone pilots. Membership is free and we offer a free safety course, great for both new and experienced drone pilots. And we have a huge and friendly Facebook group Great for asking questions and sharing tips. There's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Safe and happy flying.